again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have received your Thunder Sticks, please have a seat where our, our program is about to begin. Arizona State's been looking great. Michael Udall and the rest of the roster are just such legends when it comes to Heroes of the Dorm. They were here in 2015. They made it all the way to the finals against California Berkeley. Uh, of course, they did fall in game number five, but here they're back in this season, 2016, looking for that redemption. We're here live at the massive Century Field Event Center, where our final four teams will be battling it out in Blizzard Entertainment's Team Brawler, Heroes of the Storm. Guys, it's so good to be down here with you. Oh, man. We want Shanghai with your quad. All right, we have the shot. Let's do this. We're going 12 to 11. If anybody could win in Artosis, this crowd is insane. They were lined up around the block, and I know they're just as excited as we are. UT Arlington has only dropped one game this entire okay, tournament. So we started over a month ago with over 500 teams signing up for our online qualifiers. And now we are here today in the heroic force, putting four amazing teams. We have Tennessee, UT Arlington, UConn, and Arizona State. And what is their main objective? To destroy their opponent's core and take home the ultimate prize, tuition for their college careers. Everything that I do in my life right now is working towards getting on to the big stage of video gaming. I've thought about it and wrestled with it a lot, like schoolwork, professional gaming, like which one reaps more benefits, but I think this is like one of the only times that I'll have the opportunity, so I want to chase it. Where's it going? Well, it's not a fad, and it's not a trend. Uh, it's been here. It's been here before me, uh, long before me. It's time to begin game number one. Let's make some noise for Arizona State versus UC Berkeley. You think it's 1.2 billion, 1.3 billion, depending on what source you look at. Basically, everyone plays some amount of video games today. In the future, esports is going to grow exponentially as it is right now. I think it can go to the same levels we see any traditional sporting expression go to, if not further. In 2015, Arizona State, in a five-game series, just barely lost it. I just don't want to lose. Like, I like I lost last year. Like, I want to know. Like, the first thing I think that will go through my mind is, like, I don't want to get second place this year. Like, I'm, I'm going for first. There was definitely a contrast of like sadness because like obviously we're so close, but last year I was just happy getting to the final four, whereas this year I think I won't be happy unless we win. I think that's a big thing. It's like our, my goal is a lot different this year than last year. My name is Michael Udall and I go to ASU. I'm not positive what I'm studying. Right now I'm just kind of taking a semester to, it sounds cliche, but like find myself. So I'm taking a lot of classes that I find like fascinating. So I think I am gonna go towards a sociology degree though. I grew up in Mesa, Arizona, which is about 20 minutes east of Phoenix. 
It's actually funny, in high school, Mesa was rated the most boring city in the country, or like it was like top five, something in there, which kind of surprised me because I always had a lot of fun. Uh, I would say I had amazing parents, like amazing family. There's four of us, so four of us kids. Um, there's my older brother, his name's Joseph. He was always kind of my role model, like in high school, I looked up to him because he was so cool. Him and his friends would always play Halo, they'd have like Halo hookups. And when Joseph and his friends would game, Michael was right there gaming with them. <laughs> when he was like seven, I walked into the room and he's like orchestrating all the kids. They're all older than he is, but he's telling everyone what to do. The Udall name is like really well known in Arizona because they were some of the first pioneers. And my grandfather in particular, like he was very, very involved in politics and things like that. I was definitely that mom that limited their TV, limited their computer time, limited their game system time, so they would have to earn time to do that. So video games are always kind of like a silent passion of mine, that's the best way I would put it. Um, I, like, I didn't let any of my friends, like especially computer games, I didn't let any of my friends know that I'd play them. Like every once in a while I'd play like Halo with a couple of my friends, but that was different. That's more of just like... Um, for fun, that's like social, but like video games, especially on the computer, were like a no-no and like all of my friends, they'd like make fun of kids that played video games on like the computer, which was like awkward for me because like I was like in the friend group and just like it was like this like, I honestly felt like it was like my deep dark secret, right? Like I'd play video games and like I would come up with all these excuses, they'd like hang out, I'd be like, oh, I'm like running late and it's like I'm trying to finish up a game before I go to hang out. I hid it from my extended family. Like my grandparents didn't really know, like they knew I played games, like they didn't know to the extent. And then my parents always gave me like such a hard time just cause it was like, you don't want your kids to play video games cause it's a waste of time. So Adam and Tyler Rosen, they're in the esports group at Blizzard. They came up with the idea of doing a collegiate Heroes of the Dorm tournament last year to celebrate and support the game launch. So they had this idea to do a collegiate, put it all together, run the tournament, and then have it end with this big finals event. And the fact that they're really trying to push, you know, the, the amateur scene, the college scene, is a big boost for the industry. And that's what's so cool about TESPA and about Heroes of the Dorm, looking to, to go onto college campuses, provide for these students and these student organizations, and help them then be part of TESPA and this big collegiate esports movement at large. TESPA is an organization that provides a home to people who love gaming and love esports on every single college campus. We're split into kind of two components. We have the community side, which is all about building these great groups and helping them host great events, and the competitive side, which is hosting these large, epic, um, continental leagues with massive prize pool. They're really unique. They're twins, obviously, and they answer each other's questions, write each other's emails, both send you the same exact email at exactly the same time, and you're like, wait, wait a second. But they're like really unique. Energetic, phone calls in the middle of the night, when they have an idea, it just comes out. It's challenging and really fun at the same time. What's really great about them is both of them have exactly no filter. So exactly what they're thinking is exactly what they tell you. So. What, what can we do to fix it? And that's really good, but sometimes really bad. So a concern that I found earlier is that the screen is actually wider than the two pillars, and I'm concerned it's gonna block it. I'm not sure that the screen's it? actually... Uh, Look at it, it's totally wider. I don't think it's a problem to have layers and stuff. I mean, I think what we should... They wanna have their hands kind of in everything. They'll want to make sure every little detail is perfect. It's kind of cool because that mindset that they have is infectious to everyone working on any show that they're leading. Just the tiniest details everyone really cares about because they care about it. Daniel Lee and I go to University of Connecticut. I'm playing for the Tricky Turtles at Heroes of the Dorm 2016. Second grade, my friend introduced me to computer gaming, and from then on, it just started going from like one game to another. And 
here I am playing Heroes. My parents, when I was young, they used to hate when I played, but now they're like, oh, this is so cool, you're going to Seattle for playing a video game, expense paid. It's like, have fun, do your best. Come home, bring something back. Esports has really been building for several years now. Each year we see it kind of hit new peaks. It feels like it's about to kind of explode all around the world. We all kind of have this feeling that we're sitting on something huge and everyone's gonna figure out how cool it is. Both esports and gaming have seen just phenomenal growth over the past five to 10 years because video games are a lot of fun. People like games and, it, and it's, a and not everyone likes physical activities, maybe might be one thing. So this just serves to that demographic of non-athletic people who enjoy challenging others to skirmishes. It's very similar to watching any physical sport that we've watched on ESPN because there's a story, uh, there's the moment, there's the, you know, the big plays. Just like in a game of basketball, it's like creating that great move or creating that great pass. The strategy, the the twists and turns. I mean, it's just, it's intense. That's the best way to put it. Being able to operate physically and stay focused and run algorithms and, and dissect your opponent and, and see things within a game that others don't see. You have to have the, the physical, emotional, and mental strength to be able to deal with it, and that's why it's a sport. If you're gonna reach for that level, it's gonna take a determination, a discipline, uh, a persistence. It's gonna, just like succeeding in anything in life. They study it, they study it to no end. I see the work that's put in. They deserve it, they expect it. How do you get to that level of confidence? You, ma you, you master something. If you look back historically, it was one-on-one. -on -one. You know, maybe there was a console, maybe there was a gaming device, Game Boy, whatever. Um, and then the internet came along and it changed some things. And then the internet got faster. And then it got really fast. And that really kicked off an explosion, I think in the esports world. And so once you could play multiplayer and it felt like everybody was in the same room and you can give people shit while you were playing, even though it's, you know, it, it just made it fun, you know? And so I think the confluence of all those things, here we are. Esports is sort of the competitive arm of playing video games. Playing video games with the idea of showing that you're better than someone, putting it on a leaderboard. But that goes all the way up to these big, huge professional tournaments where you see 500 teams enter and something like Heroes of the Dorm with hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake, winners taking home college tuition. Heroes of the Dorm is an amateur tournament and it's got a completely different focus than the rest of esports. It's focused on college teams playing not for prize money but for tuition. So it's, it's really different than anything else out there right now. For you guys, what has been more stressful, this or finals? Midterms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, midterm. Yeah, yeah midterms for sure. By a mile. And yeah. what's more important? This is. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the approach of Heroes of the Dorm, getting all the college kids kind of involved. It can be a little bit daunting for anyone to really get into it as a competitor because all the tournaments are professional. You go sign up for a tournament and you're gonna hit someone that's already been playing for five years all day every day, you're not gonna have a chance. At its core, Heroes of the Dorm is for students. It's for giving them a way to meet over something they care about, to relate to other people that they may not have anything else in common over. It's for them to have an opportunity to do something they love at a high level and to devote energy into something that might pay for their college careers. And it's a way to inspire them to reach out for those dreams and to become a part of something they really care about, whether that's as a player or as um, a fan or as part of a, a college organization. The attention that's being paid to this generation's focus and their desire to compete with each other is exactly where it needs to be. I was supported in college playing collegiate basketball. I'm screaming from the top of the mountain every day. Why? Because I recognize it. I see it. I connect to it. I understand it. We speak the same language. And that's a great thing to create an outlet like that where students that, you know, love the game and, and all come together and, and share the same interest. That's what it's all about. University of Tennessee, or also known as We've All In, a bunch of characters, uh, really great guys. I like them. I am a people person. I am ready to be there. I'm ready to do it, man. This is my first year competing in Here's the Dorm. Uh, last year I didn't make a team because I didn't expect the South. Just in general, I didn't think it would have the amount of talent that would be needed to make an actual team. My name is
name's David Young, also known as Rafflecopter, and I go to school at University of Tennessee, Knoxville. This is my home state, and it's always a little bit cheaper to go to your home state's university. Knoxville is pretty crazy. They call it Knox Vegas, where I'm from, Johnson City, Tennessee. It's not actually that wild, but there's stuff to do. Johnson City, Tennessee, which is about an hour and a half from Knoxville, has about 30,000 residents. Super small town. There may be more cows and like livestock than actual people, but a uh, bunch of good folk out there, yeah. The South, for the most part, religion takes the front seat. Everything else kind of comes behind that. Family, community, kin, stuff like that. It started from a really young age. I think my first game was like Crash Bandicoot. I started playing StarCraft a lot. I mean, I wasn't very good at it. I was like platinum, so I was, you know, above average. But I started getting like that little hint of like glory. Like, oh, I might actually be pretty good at video games. Gaming at first was just a hobby for me, um, but now it's kind of evolved into a part of my life almost. He's pretty passionate about the game. I mean, he spends a lot of time on that. Like, a lot of time. That's all he really does, to be honest with you. <laughs> he goes to school and he plays games. Off you go. All right. Like, how do I get this horse to go? It's like getting to a point now where it's starting to pay off a little bit. Like, I'm pretty much every month, I'm bringing back like a pretty decent sized check now. Um, it's not huge, but it's decent. Uh, I think it's awesome that he gets to do that because that's what he likes to do. That's what he's good at, and it's playing video games for money, essentially. It's really rewarding to a certain extent. Like, it's just, I think competition is the biggest part for me. The more you compete, the more, like, you gotta keep coming back because it just keeps getting better and better. But also, like, having the opportunity to travel and just meeting people, really, it's great. 90% competition and then, like, 10% like, oh, yeah, I get to meet Artosis. How far back does it go right now, right? Like, because we'll have the LED in the back. The LED no, sits on the back. back. The LED sits on the back of the platform. I think people would be surprised at how much goes into building an event like this on the Blizzard side. And that is months of preparation. We started the basic planning of this last August. There's really two different teams right now. One is everything you can see here, and then there's an entire creative and production team that's in the office working really closely in sync. There's a lot of work to be done in graphics, graphics production, and the broadcast production, and then obviously there's a lot of physical elements still to finish. That's why we have 225 people working for us today. Scenery, audio, video, lighting, and then all the broadcast production also, so video trucks and all the infrastructure that we need to broadcast the show. Are we going to have a label out here so people know what this is? Yes, this and will have a, facts, this will right? have a monitor right. with facts. So we have some cool, cool facts about like how many processing <laughs> GPU calculations. Yeah. The, yeah. Like we have over a thousand GPU cores as part of the system. Dude, like, that's crazy. I, we have the real <laughs> stats on all that. That's so like awesome. we have all that. We have a pretty extensive video server and media server system that supports all the new heroes. 12 custom, extremely high-end video servers that run just the set system. We run about 70 HD outputs of video, and that all has to tie in to the game and the game servers to make sure it's all smooth and seamless and accurate. In total, we have about 150 computers or servers that run this show. After the load and labor leaves, we're about 125 to run the show production. The crews come in and build. Even before that, the casters are doing pre-shows at the ESPN studio. I come in a few days before, but I've been studying, talking to casters, talking to players for a month before. So all of this at Heroes of the Dorm 2016 was a culmination of so many people, hundreds and hundreds of people. All of the major groups in Blizzard. So esports, events, marketing, corporate alliances, production, broadcast. Practicing, preparing, and making this event happen. Definitely a dark horse going into this one. My team really doesn't have the experience that I do in the competitive setting. So that gives me a little bit of a disadvantage, but I think if we're able to work around that, I think we should be able to do well. They're totally just this team that has this amazing heart. They started just wanting to get to the round of 64 so that they could get the free skin. And then all of a sudden they're here in the heroic four teams. That's just crazy. They did not expect that. Nobody expected that. Their bracket was so crazy. It had a lot of really great teams in it. 
When they started, it was really riding on Rafa Copper's play, and they still are, but they've gotten to a point now where there's a lot more playmakers. We're definitely the underdogs here. You know, UTA and ASU, they've been talking a lot of crap. So if we're able to beat them, I think it will like definitely like validate us as players and especially for myself too, because it's such a great like um, stepping board to go into the professional scene. Pike's Place Market, it's pretty nice. I like the atmosphere, the people are pretty cool. Catching a fish was awesome. I didn't drop it, got that hand-eye coordination. Esports. <laughs> We're just friends, like, we did it for fun. I don't think any of them have any plans on being pro, so. Our biggest competition is probably ASU. First game we play, Saturday. And then I think if we can beat them, we can probably beat anybody. Well, whoever else wow. is next, right? Oh, 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 UConn. Dan Lee for free, great player. Flexes plays almost any role you can think of. Kind of same situation that we're in, where we only have one professional player that has that experience. Yeah. Want to prove myself and prove to others that I can be top tier, top talent. I have that competitive spirit to try to be number one, and I think that's the driving force behind it. Uh, dude, we're heroes of the dorm. Our team made it. It feels so good. I like, made it to the final four. We're playing UConn tomorrow. I'm really excited about it. I'm feeling confident. And then we're going to play the winner of Tennessee versus UTA. Uh, we're thinking it'll be UTA, but we would love to see an upset. Our life here in Seattle has been really busy. Like We're getting up at like 9 o'clock and just go, 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 go. Like All day, we have back-to-back -back interviews all the time. I went to college right after high school and I've been playing. Um, it's definitely possible. It's just if you want to try hard enough, like anything's possible. You just have to want it enough. If you don't want a girlfriend or a social life. <laughs> I mean, that's the honest answer. There's like three of them. Like you choose a social life, esports, and school. Like You choose two. It's like kind of hard to find time to practice in there because like always in the back of our mind, we're thinking like we need to practice, like we need to get warmed up, like we need to do all these things, we need to focus on draft. This is the only free time we're going to have and then we're straight into tournament mode. Maybe a little extra time tonight after we practice to grab some dinner or something, but other than that, it's all, all business. Yeah, so first time in Seattle, I love it. Like it's so hipster, I walk around and I feel like there's just like hipsters everywhere, which I think is cool. We're kind of the villain. Like the teams think we're super confident, super arrogant. And I mean, we are, we're a confident team. We definitely, the stuff we say, we do think we're the best team. I mean, but everyone kind of has to have that mindset going into it. The game doesn't start like when you load into the Nexus, or, like when you start drafting up on stage. Like the game starts when you show up Thursday. And we've just been like going at it. Like we've been mental warfare with all the other teams. Like we're super confident and we want to scare people. I mean, we're doing it too like, yeah. Get in other people's heads. No, we are confident. I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, we're here to win. Like, it's strategy. I don't know, confidence and cockiness are like, they're, it's good to have a little bit of both. Like, but too much of anything is like gonna hurt you, so. Except winning. Too much winning. No, even too much. Like, I mean, <laughs> no, yeah, the top teams winning keep in. winning till they like don't know how to get better and, and then they fall, you know? Yeah. You learn a lot from losing. It's true. Scheduling the flights was awesome, man. Just like after winning the, the series against Boston College, just scheduling the flights was an exciting experience. Like I was like, oh my god, this is real. Like we're actually like doing this. It's it's a, it's a real cool experience, man. A little bit of nerves, mostly just really excited, you know, to get get here and uh, you know hopefully perform. So actually, at the airport was the first time I met Kier. So I mean, I, we had never met before. We'd always always been online. We were supposed to meet up at, at a UTA land, but. I don't know what happened, but he didn't busy, show up. Man. He was just I'm too busy doing his, his debate team or whatever. Yeah, so. they're ready. That's it. Sitting in a Starbucks, just like, I'm ready for this. My name is Andrew Rodriguez. I'm also known by Mist and I go to University of Texas at Arlington. Growing up, I was playing soccer because my dad was a, a big soccer player back in the day. 
until my sister started dating her now husband. Uh, he was a hockey player and he, he was playing for the high school team and we would go out to his games and, and he got to hit people and I thought that was really cool. In soccer you can't hit people. I mean you can but you'll get carded for it or something like that. So I took skating lessons that year and then, then was right on the ice the next year and just been playing ever since. Um, I've always loved playing defense. I, I was never a big goal scorer. I, I don't want all the glory of scoring goals, but I'll, I'll do the nitty gritty work to keep the puck out of my own net so that my guys can go and score and do their, their part. When I'm on the ice in ice hockey, nothing else in the world matters. Like I'm just, I'm there. I've, everything else in the world is tuned out. I forget about school. I forget about my friends. I forget about everything except me and my teammates. That's all I care about. And this kind of transfers over with gaming. Like when I'm in my video game playing the game, I'm laser sharp focused. All that matters is winning the game and working with my team to accomplish a, a similar goal. Gamers today can come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I think that's proven by uh, Mist. I mean, he, he would not strike you as your typical gamer. Well, originally, I went to Baylor University my first two years of college. I had a really good scholarship coming out of high school, but I didn't focus enough on my schoolwork when I was there, so I wasn't making good enough grades for how much Baylor actually cost. One of the main reasons my schoolwork suffered in Baylor is because I got involved with all of the fraternities. And when you do that, there's a party every night, so it just kind of didn't work out the way I, I thought it would. <laughs> I mean, if people have, have a skewed view of what gamers or, or people who play video games actually look like or, or act like, and I, it's really hard to guess. Like, if I, if I went up to a random person and said, hey, guess, guess what my favorite thing in the world to do is, that their first thought would not be gaming, I don't think, just, just looking at me. First of all, welcome guys, super excited to have you here. Cool to have representation from all different parts of the United States here. We wanted to take a minute, give you guys a little bit of background on the event. This event is really the most prestigious stage in collegiate esports and we want you guys to own it. It's gonna be a big moment tonight when you come out on stage, the lights are on, the audience is packed, and you're being broadcast nationally. When Adam and I and Chris founded TESPA, one of the core principles behind that that motivated us was providing opportunities to students. Opportunities for students to reach the biggest stages, right? For people who want that, people who are the best, the tip top of their game, to be able to reach stages like this and follow that ambition to the highest level. So we're really proud to have you guys a part of the event. To be able to solo this game is an award in itself, much less, you know, you know, act as a team and develop strategies. This game revolves a lot more on chemistry than most other games, because it's not solo mechanics. Let's take a closer look at what Heroes of the Storm is all about. Heroes of the Storm is a team brawler game. It has two teams of five players each who are trying to win by destroying their opponent's core. It looks like they may have enough damage to actually end this game right now. GG! Pots is a lot like capture the flag, except instead of flags, you have cores, and instead of trying to capture the flag, you're trying to destroy the flag. You want to protect your core as much as possible while trying to kill the enemy and take out their core. Each player gets to play one hero. You get to play this individual hero that levels up throughout the game. It's not the same hero every single game. You will draft different heroes every time you play the game. The way you actually get your heroes is there's what, like 50 or 51 right now, like heroes in the game, and there's like a drafting phase, which is like very, very strategic. Each team goes through a ban phase, and then each team goes through a pick phase. It's kind of like a chess match, almost. It's like if somebody moves their knight into a certain position, you want to move yours into a certain position that kind of counters whatever move they make next. Because every hero has like a strength and a weakness. You want to build heroes that are kind of like synergistic, which is the same with like any sport, like basketball. Like it doesn't matter how strong they are, like if they don't work well together, they're going to crash and burn. You work together with your teammates to, in team fights, kill your opponents. Pretty much throughout the entire game, starting at the first minute of the game, you're going to be fighting the entire time. The team fights, because they're flashy and fun, they're pretty fun to watch too. 
The game length usually goes from about 15 to 20 minutes. There are different battlegrounds that have different objectives, so you work together with your teammates to try to capture those objectives. That's the one unique thing about Heroes of Storm, is it's not just the same map every time. There's different objectives on each map. Like the skill cap is endless because there's so many different maps and so many different things that are always coming out. And that's pretty much how the game goes. High five. Wow, it's packed here already. There's still a line outside. Hey, um, Rhea said that you had some concerns about capacity. Are we filling up already? How big is the line out there? We walked by like 10 minutes ago and it was... 200 more, okay. Hello and welcome to the Heroes of the Dorm Heroic Forum. Here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, four college teams have come to battle it out. They've descended on the Century Link Field Event Center to fight for the right to be called the Heroes of the Dorm. Oh my back. God, back. you can't even see the end of the line. This top four, anybody could win. Anybody could win, and Artosis, this crowd is insane. They were lined up around the block, and I know they're just as excited as we are to see who's gonna win. Oh my god, it's huge out there. Free. Beautiful, love that shot. Okay, copy that. Stand by, wide zone, right. and roll wide, take track. Seattle showed up. There was not an empty seat in the house. These teams, they fought so hard to get this far. We started over a month ago with teams signing up for our online qualifiers. They competed to make it into the top 64 bracket play, our version of the March Madness. And now we are here today in the heroic force, sporting four amazing teams. We have Tennessee, UT Arlington, UConn, and Arizona State. Seattle, are you ready? First matchup today is between UT Arlington and Tennessee. UT Arlington are our strategic master. I played ice hockey for the last 13 years of my life, so I feed off of crowds. Like when, when I have a big crowd, when I'm playing ice hockey, I feed off of it. Tennessee, they could be our surprise team, our underdog team even. Nobody predicted they would be here. Honestly, if we're able to win the entire thing, I mean, it would put a lot of like relief um, a lot of stress off my shoulders for paying for school because um, I'm going into my fifth year now and I'm going to be losing a lot of like my scholarships and stuff. So being able to have that off my shoulders would be huge. Oh, stand by Ten, nine, Definitely as a leader of my team, the majority of the responsibility of the loss is on me. I was pretty upset about it. Um, I feel like we had the potential to definitely beat those guys. Uh, it's definitely in the first game, we were ahead early. Cindio swaps places to try to save himself, but it's not enough. Oh, he does get blown up right there. In the coming, they're coming. Ruffle stall. I get down. Shit, 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 shit. I'm rotating down. I'm rotating down. And it looks like Frumgor coming up, and they will take him down. That's a big ring win right now. It's now a five versus. It was actually going really well at first, but um, I think the crowd was just getting to him, and we started missing uh, mechanics. Mathis is hit by the purifier beam. Went for a mosh pit, but that puts him where he's standing still. He gets taken out to a great When we got in the game, we knew that Rafa Copter was their was their ace basically. So all we had to do is shut him down, and we, we pretty much rolled him from there. Look at this. We do have Cladius actually going after Rafa Copter right That's now. Two you told us about. Oh, Rafa Copter barely gets away with the purifier beam. Is coming out. Can he escape from it? Can Rafa Copter go? You hey, you don't cure it, you don't cure it, you don't cure it. If you stunned him, he would have died. I, it was on cooldown. It's okay, it's, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I and bought him. Be now, be now. And bam, goes down right there. That is four heroes dead on Tennessee. After this four deaths, we just fell behind. And as soon as that happened, my team just kind of fell apart. As soon as we lost that little glimmer of hope, it just, my team can't get that back. They just don't know how to regroup and reorganize. 
Uh, it's frustrating because I know that if they were more experienced, this wouldn't be happening. But then again, I can't blame them because they have other things. Like I have two PhD students; they have things they need to focus on besides esports. We were all pretty disappointed and upset about it. I mean, as you would, should be, I guess. If you're not upset, then there's probably something wrong. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> oh, like even be like before the game, I was, I, was I, I said my little, I said my prayer. I did everything I do before a hockey game. Before this, like it, it, it transitions so well. It's just. I love I love competition. I love being in front of people, like like playing for for big things, big tournaments. So uh, this is definitely a, a part of my dream, and I, I love this. Thank I love this much, whole. Nick. This I is here awesome. with UT awesome. Arlington and the captain Yude. Now Yude, the crowd went wild over some of those strategies. And I know when, what I'm trying to say is I know when you lose, like, and you lose, it's hard, and it does take time. But also, you're still here, and I hope you can enjoy. Like, you can still enjoy this. So. Get what you can out of it and talk to people and meet people and it's not like you didn't it's not over just because you didn't win this thing this weekend you know and don't feel any worse than you need to feel so that you can get composed again because this the, all of that over there you don't like that's not over for you just because of today and those crowds will be there next year and those crowds will be there a lot so just don't put too bad Immediately after that, I went and helped ASU. Like I went, I went revenge somehow on UTA. So I went and helped ASU to draft and stuff like that. I want ASU to win it all. So they deserve it. They're nice people. You never have to attack across the map, which can make it. Very tough uh, for UConn in a position like this. Things aren't looking great for UConn, that's a fact. Careful with Mitchell, after, after, somebody help Mitchell out, because that's more important. It was interesting to have Arizona State paired up with UConn, because Arizona State was the widely accepted favorite. But UConn had a great record, a great record. And that record convinced a lot of people that actually maybe they were just as good as Arizona State, but maybe did, hadn't had the chance to prove themselves maybe yet. Maybe they can do it. Oh, Bam wow. actually getting stunned here. Great move by Dan Lee for three. So going against UConn, I think definitely their key player to watch is Dan Lee for three. I think he's hands down. Like he played in the pro scene. I think he is a really good player. I have a lot of respect for him. And I think if he can keep his team mentally there, I think it's going to be a really good match. Careful, bot. Oh, shit, he's trying to so I, I need help, I need help, I need help. Oh, actually, getting beautiful play, taking out Tagara. Michael Udo coming in with the mighty gun. Going into the semis, that was definitely the match I was most worried about. Um, and that's one thing I always have like tried to drill into my team. It's like one game at a time, like any team can beat you. Um, so I didn't want an upset. Nice. Thirty seconds before the majority of the heroes can come out and try to defend. I honestly thought we could take them. Um, a lot of people lost commitment after we made top four. They're like, oh, we made money around, might as well stop here. We didn't practice as much as ASU, so rightfully they should. They did win. The core goes down! G -G. G -G. Beautifully played here by Arizona State. We absolutely have to hear from Arizona State, of course. I'm standing with Mike, Mike Udall, and your family is out there, all of their cell phones. Michael Udall. Everybody, everybody has been talking about him winning the whole thing. I'm sure you can hear him behind me. He's definitely a fan favorite. I'm sad that we have to wait till tomorrow to find out, but so, Heroes fans, one of these teams standing beside me will be your 2000. So Mesa's like very conservative. I don't follow all of the same values as my family. I have a lot of respect for them. Just for me personally, it wasn't uh, the right choice, but that was like very hard being raised in a community that all knew who I was, all knew my parents, all knew that like 
these are the standards that you have and these are like this is what you should do and this is what you shouldn't do. It's like if I ever quote unquote like did things I wasn't supposed to like the whole community knew and it was like a big deal. Yeah gaming was definitely frowned upon. It was a huge no-no. Me and my parents had different like ideologies and I kind of grew away from there so there's a lot of fighting. My parents, my mom was always like the really strict one. Video games are such like a waste of time, like you're wasting your potential is like how they would phrase it. I would think, gee, what a waste of time. You guys ought to be studying algebra or anything worthwhile. You're going to college, you ought to be getting good grades and preparing to go to law school or MBA or whatever, the traditional route. How old are you, Mikey? Happy birthday The biggest relationship that I want to say that was broken it was me and my mother. The direction my mom wanted me to go is different than the direction that I wanted to go is what happened. As a mother, she obviously wants the best for her child. And she like saw her son like going off the like beaten path. So like she was the one that I fought a lot with because she's very type A of like, you need to do these things. And I was like, but I don't want to do those things. I'm going to do these things. So it was like, we had clashed a lot, especially senior year. When he was a senior in high school, Often as seniors in high school are, they, they, they want to be independent and they're stretching their wings and sometimes as parents that's hard for us and yeah, because Heidi and Mike are both very strong-willed. They are very, very, very strong-willed, both of them, and they, they ended up clashing significantly. Being on stage, like there's nothing, the nothing you can compare it to. Like I, I like I played football. Like I, I've been under the lights, right? You know, everyone talks about like Friday, like Friday lights, um, like as a football player. But like there's nothing like being on stage. Um, and you, like you get the jitters. Like when you're drafting, like first game, you got the jitters. Like your hands are like shaking, and then like you get into the game and you just like go into like a different zone. Like it's like you're at least for me. Like I feel like I'm like kind of like out of body experience. ASU. Arizona so, State. Arizona State. They call themselves the real dream team. They should tell you everything yeah. they need to know about what they think about themselves. I mean, I, I'm sure they're they're great dudes and like they're they're cool they're cool people, but the way they've been talking about like us and other teams they play just kinda comes off as overconfident, little hubris, that's what it is. Yeah, hubris, it's just yeah, they think they're a super team. Yeah. They're not even like good. Any yeah, team that thinks they're a super team is going to fall a lot harder. Big tree fall hard. Big tree fall hard. Ready to go? Ready? We're here live at the massive Century Field Event Center where the two final teams, UT Arlington and Arizona State, will be battling it out in Blizzard Entertainment's team brawler, Heroes of the Storm. Guys, it's so good to be down here with you. Oh man, I am so excited for today. Yesterday we saw Andrew great being a competitive guy is a, is a very team. large understatement. Uh, oh, man, he's not a recreational so player at all. Today. He takes every click great serious. Strategies, great play from every team, but I think today the games are going to be so close, neck and neck, it's going to be a great show. Being the youngest, um, he always uh, had to compete, and when he did compete, he was very serious about it, and um, quite annoyed if he didn't actually do well, so. These guys have a huge range of characters that they play. Uh, they have the strategies down. They've improved a lot over the year, and they seem cautiously optimistic. Yesterday, after the win, it was amazing. It was a great feeling. We all felt really good after the win, but we came here to win the whole thing, so. The, the work's not over yet. I mean, we, we 
we did a little bit of quick match, we did a little bit of studying, did a little bit of research, and we're just getting our mindset for today. It doesn't matter whether it's hockey or whether he's playing uh, soccer out on the, the backyard or trying to play football with some of his, his older brother's high school football player friends, uh, it's like a light switch. He, he goes into a very competitive mode, very introspective, very much concentrated on what he needs to do. If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna do it all the way, then you're never gonna get all the way. You're never gonna go to where you want to be. You're never gonna get to that that top peak moment of your life that you're just like, wow, I made it. You're never gonna be there unless you actually chase what you love to do. It's been very great to see how they've approached it, and it is going to be a rivalry, but they're up against Arizona State, and Arizona has been so amazingly strong throughout, very mechanically skilled, and we know since they did take second place last year that there are a lot of people voting. I did not expect the crowd to be as wild as they were when we went out there. Like when we when we walked on stage, there was there were smoke screens, there were, there were people with like bangers and just people cheering loud off the top of their mind. It was it was crazy. It was insane. I loved it. I loved every second. Of it. This was the future of esports that we imagined a few years ago. The gamer is becoming kind of a superstar in his own right. The conversation is changing. When I first started being a part of esports, the conversation was, oh, here we go again, those kids wasting their life playing video games and basement and living with parents, blah, blah, you know, stereotype, stereotype, stereotype. The has been tough. And after yesterday's matches, Heroes of the Storm has been getting a lot of attention. That conversation has completely changed to, have you heard about this cool new thing that's going on that's called eSports and all the money that people are making and how do we get involved in that? And crap, I don't understand gamers and I really need to. Arizona State! Because people don't understand. I mean, it's like anything else that's new. Until you play the game and try to excel at it, you just, you have no idea. And here they are. Shocked, Akaface, Captain Michael Udall, Bam, and Snickers! We are back at the Century Link Field Event Center here in Seattle for the Heroes of the Dorm Grand Finals. Our two teams are just about to start their draft. But Going into that go game, we knew all year that, drafting and shot calling, that that is where we lose the game. So let's go ahead, get into that draft, and see what these teams are going to go for. Leading into the games, I think our team felt really good going up against ASU. We had done our research, we had, we had done all, done all the, the, the pre-game necessities that we needed to do to know our game plan going into Remember, the games. Remember, the first stage of the drafting phase will be the bands. The first band is Falstad. UT Arlington has done their homework. Yeah, Falstad was an integral part to Arizona State's uh, roundup all the way here, but especially in their semifinal match versus UConn. They're Specifically in the draft, like the big thing we did is they didn't first pick Illidan, um, which is a lot of disrespect. So we picked it up in the 2-3 and then they didn't pick up their Asmodan in the 2-3. They aren't doing their homework, and Sylvanas, too, is going to be here to help with the lane presence. I really don't know what their plan was. I just think they super disrespected us in draft because they were so confident. Like, everyone always talks about who are the cocky and confident team, but, like, they were so cocky about their draft. They're like, oh, we're going to destroy them in draft, and we're just going to, like, win the game because of that. There was a little heat, a little... A little salt going thrown between both the teams, but yeah, I, th I think we felt pretty confident leading up to the games. Our game is loaded up. We are ready. This is game number one. UT Arlington versus Arizona State in the Heroes of the Dorm Grand Finals. Hear me, hear me, hear yeah. me. One, two, three. Heal in two, heal in two, heal in two. A failed surround here, but wait, Ooh. Arizona State's still on the run. Yeah, I deal a lot of damage right now, too. Michael Udall taking a lot of damage. He blows up in a matter of seconds. Just back out, back out, back out. out. It's all right, we're still good. Just, if you guys can get out, leave Akka, leave Akka, just back out. We're good. Two big kills so UTA was up like two levels, like the majority of the early game. And that was something where I was telling the team, I was like, that's, this is, that's what's going to happen. They're going to try and just choose our buildings down. 
put as long as they don't get a keep, like we're in a really good spot because as soon as we reach like 10 minutes into the game, we're gonna destroy them. Live in a great void prison, stop some of the members of it. As Arizona State, let's still the fight yeah, rages it's on. It's 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 it certainly does, it's Michael. You all in the middle of things, deal a lot of damage. Okay, does four miss there? Oh my God, a lot of damage being dealt. Here, trying to help DXN to get out, but Michael Udall is angry, taking down everybody. Exposed. We have at least 20 seconds before he killed at UT Arlington players. Up and let's spawn let's again. Let's hey, they they let me put it all in the It's getting lower. Arizona State just doing too much damage, and it goes down. She she goes. We panicked. We 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 kind of shut down. Arizona State came in just with full confidence, with full preparation, and with this amazing synergy. Map number two, battleground number two, is going to be Towers of Doom. I was like, and we're just gonna first pick Sonya, because like, they're really scared of our Sonya, and Sonya's really, really strong on that map. We're gonna lead here with one of Michael Udall's best bruisers, Sonya. He's back into the fight. Jumping all over Fam right now. Fam trying to stay alive. Akafe's helping out a lot as well. Kalani is taking tons of damage. Has to back out. Huge though. Looks like he will drop once again. And Kier now taking a lot of damage. His teammates don't seem to be able to help him. Kier goes down now. We can boss. And going after the boss. This will be it. This boss will give them four more shots. No, just boss now. We win. It looks like you are going to try to come in. But that's going to be it. GG. that truly was. If you win the first game, the enemy team should choose if they want first pick or map pick. And I told the team, I said, they're gonna choose first pick, game two, and I said, they're gonna choose map pick and take us to Infernal. Infernal Shrines and all of its purple glory, red and blue, it will be the uh, action going on here. But the last game was actually kind of intense. So a normal composition here for UT Arlington, they can get engaged with Claudius, hunting into oh. the top left. Bam, taking a ton of damage. Kira, though, taking a lot as well. Oh, missing that ancestral healing. How unfortunate in Arizona. Richard, State talk more. The opportunity. Dude, we, yeah, need, we, we need, need Richard talking. Right? We're, we're so lost. Missing. Yeah, but it's so hard to control you guys. That's not control. You. We didn't know you were being attacked on. We, we had no idea you were getting hit. Cut out, cut out, cut out, cut out, cut out, we cut out, were playing cut out, really, really sorry. well um, all early game. Like We were playing really well the whole game, um, except there was one core call where we actually, I remember it, we killed like three or four of their heroes, and it was like 10 or like 12 minutes, which like is really early to try and end the game. And Shaw is like, I told you he's our hype man. And he's like, core, core, core. And I was like, um, I was like, we're not gonna be able to kill it. And he's like, do it anyways. And I was like, okay. Will they be able to get this core, Michael Udall? Shaw, Akafe, Snickers. Do not shield Illidan, just shield the core. I have center in 10. If you can delay for 10 seconds, we're okay. Shot taking damage. Shot may go down. Shot goes down. It's that core. I'll damage that core. He has no center. Akka die. Akka die is good. Michael Udall, oh. still there. And it looks like the core is still low, but Michael Udall is about to ball. UT oh Arlington God. holds, and now they will push across the middle of the field here, grab the Punisher, but remember, they are down okay, 24% Okay, go, go, get the mortal, get the mortal, we're going court. for death at push here. Point, uh, it's right. the court's at 24%. It. it was like a good call because if we wipe on the core, they can't return it. And trading four lives for a core at 27% is a really good trade because what happens is if you ever get a pick, you can just go all in their core and win. Kill everyone and win the game. And they're doing that now, sneaking around, jumping in the bush. A bush party here is right above Arizona State. They want to take him out before yeah, they can fight this. Yeah, we'll yeah, 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 yeah. teleported here. Where is the Sundering? I would love to see it. A boy for the comes out. Kill this guy out of the kill. Low on HP, but the fight is on the way. It's going to be 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 the My parents never really cared. Like, right? Like, even if I had like a close game, like, they never cared. It was just like, oh, stop playing the video game. So that's like something I always grew up with. Like, when I'm playing video games, I'd have like the self kill of, oh, I'm wasting my potential playing these video games. That feeling, I remember last year, Berkeley, one of their players, his parents ran up on stage and like, I remember the picture of it like went viral and I was like, that totally would have been me and my parents.
that's honestly like the goal of it, like to make people not feel ashamed to be like a gamer. Like that's kind of what I want. And to like, I think the biggest thing is you have to give people like a, this is what you can achieve. Like this is what you can do if you go far in this. Cause like everyone needs that. Like you need to be able, mom, like look, like I'm not just wasting my time. Like I'm not just like wasting my potential. Like I could get a college scholarship for this. Like I could make it to the pro scene. Like I could make all this money and do all these things off of this video game, which is like not just a waste of time. This was coming and they are here to stop it. Snickers jumps in, doesn't really get a very good mosh pit there. Akaface taking lots of damage, but they are going for the core. Oh, we're going on the core. Come on! Snickers, 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 Snickers,
Uh, it feels so good. I mean, we worked so hard. The guys, like, we all put in a lot of work, and it just feels so good to finally have the confetti go off. And, and I can, you like, don't play. reach that level without the dedication and the focus and the discipline and the endless hours up uh, 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 honing your craft. You don't reach that level having disappointment and struggle and loss uh, and fighting through that and not accepting that that is going to be the stopping point for you. You bust through that wall. Just got to use it. I mean, I was, I was hurt. I was hurt. I was on the verge of tears after those games. You have to fail to succeed in life. You can't, you can't go through life with all successes. I mean, you have to be able to fight through the failures. I mean, you just kind of got to push forward from that point. That's it. That's all she wrote. Come sit down. I think last night was huge in esports. I think in 10 years, when we're looking back at how much collegiate esports have grown, I think this is going to be a moment where they're like, this is where it kind of took off. It's garnered a lot of interest from some traditional sports guys like me, and so the best is yet to come. It, it's not going away. It's only going to get bigger and better, and we're going to get bigger and better at it. The fact that you have more gamers than ever, the fact that game developers are building better esports than they ever have, means that you're going to see esports get bigger and bigger every year. And I think it's going to be the start of the snowball, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna be so grateful and so happy to be there like pushing it and like shoving it along and like getting esports, like collegiate esports, like to the top, because I think that's where it deserves to be.